Welcome to part three of the geometry prep for fluid flow simulation tutorial. Now, in the previous part, we extracted the flow volume, we cleaned it up. And now in part three, we're going to decompose or split up the fluid volume so that you can assign certain properties to the different volumes in your fluid flow solver. Uh, before uh, we move on, I just want to point out the simulation information display or SID down at the bottom of your screen. The SID is a place where messaging and other information is available. So for example, you'll see this little message icon here. If you click on it, it just tells you information that is pertinent to the actions you have taken. So this particular message uh, refers to the uh, uh, time in part two where we use the sharp angles tool to identify sharp edges. And you know, just keep an eye on this area for information. Okay, so uh, let's move on. So first of all, let's go ahead and select this uh, face on the fluid volume, right click and hide others. Okay, so you'll notice we have a single fluid volume as you can see on the tree on the left right here. Now we want to chop it up into three pieces and we want to use the, the filter geometry to do so. So first let's make this transparent. So let's click here. And you can either click here or down here on the view arc and we'll make this transparent turn on the filter geometry okay now to decompose geometry there's several tools you can use uh, in this case we're going to use the combine tool click here to launch the combine tool now uh, first off let's select the fluid body by clicking here uh, you'll notice down at the bottom left you have some you know information which tells you what to do next by default the combined tool tries to split up or do a boolean subtract so you can see the icon which is a, a saw uh, if you want to combine or merge bodies together you can use this icon but we're going to chop it up so let's stay here and then click here to use the filter body to chop up the fluid volume into three pieces and you can see on the geometry tree, we have three bodies under the volume component. So we have one, two, and three. So we're good to go. Hit escape two times to dismiss the combined tool and hide the filter body again. So if we do that, you'll notice the, the fluid volume with the three bodies. Now just box select this and let's make these opaque again. And I always like to change the color of my fluid body so I can kind of see what's going on. Uh, if you recall from part one, you can change color by clicking here. So let's make the, the middle part pink. Or you can click here. And let's turn it blue. And let's do the same over here. So, okay. So this is our fluid domain split up into three parts. Now, one thing I want to point out is when you use the volume extract tool, as you noticed, the fluid volume gets put into a component called volume. As long as the fluid bodies that you created are inside that component, um, the component is automatically updated whenever you make a geometry change. So you saw that happening when we made the change to the solid and, and recreated the volume. Uh, it's very easy to do. Uh, but sometimes it's actually not so beneficial to have these bodies in that component. So for example, if I decide to extend the inlets and the outlets, so let's click on this face, invoke the halo and click the pull tool, You'll notice if you pull this face out, you'll notice the three bodies in the fluid volume got merged back into a single body. And this is obviously undesirable. So let's click here to undo that operation. Now there's two ways in which you can prevent this from happening. You can select the no, no merge option in the pull tool. So now if you pull it out, you see it doesn't merge. So let's undo this again and hit escape two times. The second way is to put each of these fluid bodies into its own component. When you do that, it basically uh, eliminates the automatic merging of these bodies. 
Before we put these fluid bodies into different components, let's rename them. So let's right click on volume, rename this to fluid dash filter. Let's do the same for the other two. So let's just call this fluid dash uh, one perhaps, and then right click and rename this to fluid two. Okay, so we have the three bodies, we just renamed them. Now, if you control select those three bodies from the tree, right click, you'll notice that we can either move them to a new component or what we want to do is move each to a new component. Okay, when we do that, you'll notice everything looks the same, but the tree has been updated. The component called volume is now empty, so we can right click and delete that. And you'll see that each of the fluid bodies are in their own separate component, okay? So now if we go back to the inlet face and we do pull, even though no merge is not selected, I can pull this out and, you know, the bodies stay separate. Let, let's do the same thing for the um, outlet side as well. Let's hit escape two times to dismiss. And now let's right click and show all, okay? So we're very close to being done. You can see we have you know, created the flow volume, we have split it up, we've moved them to different components and we have extended the inlets and outlets, which is uh, you know, a good practice. Um, the last thing we need to do is uh, create some naming conventions uh, for the different faces and so on that will be used in your Fluent or CFX solver. Okay, so um, let's um, hide everything but the Fluid domain again. And um, like I said, the easy way to do that might be to hide everything and then just turn on the three Fluid bodies. Now let's select this face and then let's click here. And you'll notice this is the place where we went to for the power select, but you'll notice there's something called groups also, okay? Now under groups, click the plus selection icon and you'll notice a new group called group one has been created. You can right click and rename this and let's call this inlet, just inlet, I guess. Let's do the same thing for the outlet click plus selection, right click, rename, and let's call this outlet. Now you'll notice that we have some additional groups. Now these groups were basically created automatically by the software when you selected rounds uh, and got rid of those through the fill operation. Uh, these are really not necessary. So you can just click, control click, right click, and just delete them. It's not necessary to delete them. It's just, uh, you know, make things look a little bit cleaner. Now, we want to create names not only for these inlet and outlet faces, but also for the bodies themselves. So let's select the filter body, the filter fluid body by triple clicking right here, and then click plus selection. And let's call this uh, porous because that's going to be a porous media zone in your. CFD solver. And then let's click the other two, or let's select the other two fluid bodies. And this time let's select them from the tree. So click fluid one, hold control, click fluid two. You have two bodies selected. Click the plus selection icon in the groups panel. And let's rename this fluid. Okay, so now we're done applying the names to the different faces and bodies. So click here to um, close that panel. Now, the only thing uh, remaining is to uh, do what we call shared topology. Uh, the shared topology operation ensures that the mesh between these different uh, fluid bodies is conformal or continuous. But before you do the shared topology, we need to indicate that we want to exclude all the solid bodies from the simulation, okay? So how do we do that? Let's right click and say show all, okay? So you have these different uh, solid bodies uh, as well as the fluid bodies. And you'll notice the icon on the far left of the geometry tree. This icon indicates which bodies are included and excluded from the simulation. Currently, 
all the bodies are included, which is the green crosshairs in the circle. So how do we exclude the solid bodies? Okay, so uh, it's quite easy to do. There's a couple of different ways. One is you can just click on that icon in the tree and you'll see it turns red, which means that that particular body is excluded. So you can just click it again to include it in the simulation. The other way is to right click on the body and exclude it from simulation. When you do that, you'll notice the corresponding component in the tree. This one has the red icon indicating it is excluded. And once again, you can include it by clicking on that icon. If you have a large assembly, doing it one at a time may not be convenient. So how do you just select all the solid bodies and exclude all of them at one time? Well, first, you know, make sure you hide all your fluid bodies. So let's collapse them first, you know, just to make it a little bit easier. And then click on this icon to hide all the uh, fluid bodies. And then either right click and say, select all. Or in this case, you can just simply box select to select all the bodies. You can see down here on the bottom right, it says 12 bodies. And then right click and say exclude from simulation. When I did that, you'll notice all the solid bodies have been excluded. Okay, so uh, quite easy. Okay, so we're done excluding the solid bodies. Let's bring back the fluid bodies. Um, so what's an easy way to just inverse the visibility? Right click and click inverse visibility and you'll see, you know, all the solids are hidden and the fluids are shown. You know, just different ways for you to play with visibility and so on. Uh, now that we're done excluding the solid bodies, let's do share topology. And you can do that by clicking here on the prepare tab and clicking here on the share tab. Now the share tab uh, shows you the faces that are going to be part of share topology. And they're colored in red. And they should be the faces which are, you know, connecting the two um, solid bodies or fluid bodies together. So this looks good. Just click the green check mark. Now you want to review this. And to do that, simply, simply click on the review tool. OK, this is the shared topology review tool. By default, it's going to show you the faces which are not shared, and they're going to color it in red. Um, but here, we don't see any red, which is a good thing, because this means all the faces between these bodies are shared. You can click here to display the shared faces, and the default color is this kind of green. You can click here to change the color to whatever you want. Okay. You can also click here to show hidden lines. So this looks good. So those are the faces which you intended to share between the three fluid bodies. And we're now good to go. So let's hit Escape two times to exit the Share Topology tool. And now let's figure out how to transfer the geometry to either Fluent or CFX. Before you do that, you want to save the, the project. So just go File, um, Save, OK? Um, and then let's go to the Fluent Transfer option. So if you click here, you see we have three options. We're going to go with the watertight geometry workflow. The Fluent Launcher pops up. Choose whatever options you want and simply click Start. This will launch Fluent. And then in a, uh, in a few seconds, you'll see the geometry imported. And then you can proceed in Fluent as you see fit. OK, so here's the geometry. And you can see it has the three different pieces. And when you create a mesh, you'll notice that the mesh is continuous between all these three bodies. And the names that we applied also come through, which makes it easy for you to apply boundary conditions and uh, fluid zone properties and so on. Now let's go back to discovery right here. Now, um, how, what if you want to use CFX or something in Workbench? Quite easy. Click this button, and this will launch Workbench. And then from there, you can you know, connect it to a CFX system. I just want to point out that this step is not necessary if you launched Discovery from Workbench to begin with. You know, but I just wanted to show you the reverse process, where if you started Discovery first and then launched Discovery, uh, then launched Workbench, this is what it would look like. So you see we have the Discovery geometry component. And let's simply drag and drop a CFX system. 
And then if we double click on the mesh component, it will launch the Workbench meshing application. And you'll be able to see the geometry, create a mesh, and then go on to CFX to set up the solver and so on. So let's just give that a second to come up. Here we are. You can see the three bodies again. And then you can see all the names we applied. So you have the inlet, the outlet, the porous zone, the fluid zone, and so on. OK, so with that, we conclude this uh, tutorial for geometry prep for fluid flow simulation. I hope you enjoyed it. And I encourage you to look at all the other tutorials we have and have fun using ANSYS Discovery.